What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and this is the iPhone 13 vs 13 Pro. Okay, so it's been a week of testing out two of Apple's newest and shiniest devices, the much anticipated 13 and 13 Pro. Now it's very likely that out of the four new iPhones that were launched a few weeks back, these two are gonna be the most popular among consumers. And after spending a week with both of them, I was really excited to put this review together because I anticipated that both of these phones were gonna be extremely similar in terms of user experience. And look, for the most part, that's kind of true. They share a ton of the same features, no doubt about it. But this was one of the rare times where I clearly gravitated more towards one particular model over the other. So today I'm gonna go into detail about how my experience has been with the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro one week later specifically going over their similarities and key differences in order to help you decide which one of these phones is better for you. Now, before we jump into the review, in case you're new here, I'm Jason. I would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me out. And in case you're a tech junkie like me, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the reviews. And before I get into this, let me ask real quick. What do you guys think of Apple's new Sierra Blue? Do you think it's the best color or is there a better one out there? Curious to see which iPhone 13 color you guys think is best. Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so when talking physical design, not only are the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro quite similar, they're essentially following the exact same format as last year's iPhone 12 models. They both have the glass on glass build with that super flat frame that brings all the components together. They still follow the same physical differentiators between the Pro and the non-Pro models as well, with the Pro using the more premium stainless steel for the frame and that very nice looking frosted glass, while the non-Pro uses aluminum and having a glossy finish on the glass. The dimensions are near identical to last year's model as well, just a tad thicker this time around, and a bit heavier. Now, an area of slightly more noticeable change is with the cameras. Both the 13 and 13 Pro have upgraded hardware, with the camera sensors being larger, so you do have larger housings as well as larger lens cutouts than last year. And Apple decided to go with a diagonal orientation with the cameras on the 13 rather than a vertical one. But overall, even the changes here are pretty subtle. Now, one of the more hyped up changes that had a lot of anticipation was around the iPhone's notch. Most phones don't have notches anymore, so everyone was super excited about the rumors that Apple was going to reduce the size of the one that it has. And yes, they did make it smaller than before. You can see the difference here when it's next to the older model. Will you actually notice or care that it's not as large as before? Probably not. And that's not to say that I don't appreciate Apple doing what they can to make it smaller. I just think that a notch isn't as intrusive of a thing that people make it out to be. For the majority of the actions that you do on a phone, the notch really doesn't get in the way. And to me, it's a small price to pay for what's, in my opinion, the best and most convenient biometric security system out there. I'm super glad that Face ID is still on both of these phones. Sure, it would have been nice to have a secondary system like a new in-display touch ID, but considering how well Face ID works, I'm not that bummed over not having something like that. All in all, when talking physical design, though there is a lot of the same here, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize just how well put together these phones are. Both the 13 and 13 Pro exemplify Apple's commitment to quality as they both feel phenomenal in the hand. They're both IP68 dust and water resistant certified, and they still look fantastic despite recycling the design. If I have to choose, the 13 Pro would be my choice. I do like the frosted glass better as it's way less prone to fingerprints, and though I can't say the same about the stainless steel frame, the more premium build material does feel better in the hand. But honestly, if you put a case on your phone, which you really should because these are both extremely fragile, none of that really matters. What does matter is that the size in comparison to the two iPhone 13 variants is probably the most ideal. You can easily navigate around iOS with one hand for most activities. It's still pretty comfortable to carry around and you still get a very nice immersive user experience. Now I wanna circle back on how these iPhones are thicker and heavier than before. And one of the main reasons for that is that Apple put in bigger batteries this year. And this is one of those upgrades that usually goes underappreciated when talked about in keynotes. But man, I was pleasantly surprised at how much better the batteries perform. I've been averaging over 7 hours of screen on time with the regular 13 and over 8 hours on the 13 Pro, which is pretty fantastic. I could easily get through a day on a full charge with either phone, and the iPhone 13s noticeably seem to manage power better. Some serious props for the 13 Pro. You do get better battery life despite the dimensions being the same as the regular 13, which is surprising because I would have assumed the opposite. There are features exclusive to the 13 Pro that no doubt require more power, so this is really nice to see. When it comes to other areas of upgrades around performance, most are shared between both devices. They're both equipped with Apple's newest A15 Bionic processor, the fastest chip in any smartphone. The 13 Pro does have five cores for the GPU in comparison to the 13's four. After a week of using the phones, I have not noticed any difference in graphics performance, but there is a minute difference there. And as to be expected, both phones are extremely fast. I mean, we're at a point where if you've used an iPhone in the past three years, it's not gonna seem different for most actions. Navigating around the UI continues to be smooth and stutter-free. 
Apps open quickly and stay open in the background for a while, and spec-intensive gaming will be a walk in the park. The real way in which the horsepower of the A15 Bionic is going to be leveraged is with the advanced camera features, and Apple made some considerable upgrades with the cameras overall. With all the cameras on the 13 and 13 Pro getting larger sensors, still image quality has gotten better across the board. This is especially true for low light performance, and some serious gains on the ultra wide camera, it's noticeably sharper than before. One of the new features to make its way to this year's iPhone is Macro Shot. You can now take super close up images through the wide angle lens, and honestly, the quality is way better than expected. A lot of competitors have been adding macro lenses to their smartphone cameras that usually just end up producing absolute trash, so it's nice to see that this new addition actually adds value to the user. Though there weren't any hardware upgrades to the front-facing cameras, performance is still pretty stellar, with portrait selfies looking particularly good as it leverages the depth sensors afforded through Face ID, and you still get some of the best and most natural-looking selfies available. You have the standard difference here with the Pro having the LiDAR sensor and telephoto lens, which now punches in at a standard 3x zoom and performs great. But all in all, still image quality is still going to be pretty close between the two. The same could also be said about the video shooting capability, which, let's just come on and say it, is the best on any phone by a far margin. Both phones can shoot standard 4K video in 24, 25, 30, or 60 frames per second on both the front and back cameras, which is impressive, and can also shoot in 4K Dolby Vision HDR at up to 60 frames per second. And look, this footage speaks for itself. The quality is leagues ahead of any other smartphone camera. You get incredibly rich colors. Dynamic range is mind-bogglingly good. The dual pixel autofocus is best in class. And the stability that you're able to achieve when shooting handheld is like magic. Now, the newest feature to be added to both iPhones is cinematic mode, which kind of acts like a portrait mode for your camera and allows you to do things like artificially create effects like racking focus between two subjects. It's a pretty impressive feature in it that it requires an insane amount of processing power in order to use. Shout out to the A15 Bionic. Honestly, after messing around with it when I first got my hands on the phones, I didn't really use it again. Unless you do a lot of pre-planned out video shoots, you're likely not going to use this feature that much. But hey, as many people are getting into mobile video production, it could be quite useful to a certain segment of folks. Overall, the camera quality is again very similar in terms of performance, no real advantage held by one or the other, minus maybe the addition of the telephoto lens of the Pro. And it's fair to say that what we're seeing here is best in class. Apple continues to be the most consistent with its ability to provide solid photo and video, and continues to widen that gap. Okay, so up to this point, let's be real. There really hasn't been too many differences between the 13 and the 13 Pro, but this last difference is the one to me that really counts. And that's the fact that the 13 Pro is equipped with a new ProMotion display. This gives the more premium phone the ability to hit up to 120Hz refresh rate, which provides a noticeably smoother UI navigation experience. I mean, you see this difference right away when you first power on the phone and start going through the setup process. And man, Apple did this right. Everything from scrolling through the apps and UI animations are more engaging to the eye, and this is a variable 120Hz panel, which will fluctuate between 10Hz all the way up to 120 automatically based on what you're doing. This setup in addition to the larger battery helps keep battery life optimal, and there's no throttling here. Majority of the actions that you'll do on this phone come out way smoother. Now the hard thing is showing this on camera because it's extremely difficult to exhibit. I know it seems like there's not much of a difference at all, it's just one of those things that you have to experience firsthand in order to fully understand. Now the regular 13 is equipped with the standard 60Hz refresh rate panel, so it's going to look and feel the same way iPhones have in the past, and I actually think this difference makes a lot of sense. The Pro version of the iPhone should have more Pro features, and this display no doubt makes for a more premium user experience, and helps finally somewhat justify the cost difference. The iPhone 13 comes in at $799, while the Pro version comes in at $999, and that $200 difference makes more sense now. Personally, the addition of the ProMotion display is one of those things that if you actually try it out, it's really hard to walk away from because think about it. It's a feature that's going to impact almost every interaction on the phone. And because of that, I would definitely go with the 13 Pro this time around and won't have any second guesses about my choice. Now, I recognize that I'm privileged enough to choose between the two, and I don't want to discount what the regular 13 brings to the table because it's a rock-solid phone and pretty good value for $799, and it still has around 95% of the same features as the Pro, so don't feel as though you're getting a subpar device going with the regular 13. It's a fantastic phone that'll serve you very well, but it does seem more clear than before. The Pro versions of the iPhone are starting to appropriately pull ahead, and the 13 Pro is a great example of that. But hey, that's just me. And I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think of the 13 and 13 Pro? Which one would you go with and why? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys found it useful. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.